All right, guys, so in this video, I'm actually gonna give you eight tips on figuring out what is the best food to sell from home. So if you're looking to create a home-based food business, these eight tips will give you a good idea of what you should sell, not exactly what you may want to sell. And if you're really good at baking, really good at making snacks, really good at making certain types of foods that are allowed under cottage food, these eight tips will help you create a more profitable product, easier to make, faster to make, and sell it in a way that will get people to come back again. Follow me all the way through this direct entire video up to the eight tips. We're gonna dive into that right now. All right guys, so welcome back. Again, as I mentioned back in the introduction, we are gonna give you the eight tips to create a product which would be what is the best food to sell from home? That is a question that we get quite often and a lot of people are looking to create home-based food businesses because they're either out of work or they need an additional income stream or they just wanna create their own home-based food business and they have left their job in order to do that. So these are tips that I have kind of understood and experienced over the past 12 years in regards to building my own e-commerce food business. So I'm gonna bring these eight tips to you. Now remember, these are not in any particular order, but a lot of cases you can build and create a really good food business from home with the multitude of cottage food laws, the foods that they allow you to make under those laws. Of course, not every state's gonna allow you to create something like fried chicken, fast food, or hamburgers, or those types of things. Things that are considered potentially hazardous as they're known because they're time or temperature sensitive. So these are gonna be eight tips to create products that are not time or temperature sensitive. So let number, number one, recipe is easy to scale. Finding a product, a particular food item, that is scalable, you need to be aware of this. And if you're not familiar with the concept of scaling, if you've got a recipe for one batch of, let's say, cookies, well, you need to make sure that you have a recipe that allows you to create 10, 12, 14, or 16 batches at one time because you need to have enough product to take to a local market, a local fair, the farmer's market, or in some states even, sell it to retail stores and even into restaurants or cafes or coffee shops. Now. The scalability of your recipe will dictate the truly success you're gonna have from a home-based food business because a lot of recipes are a real challenge to create on just one batch, but having the ability to create multitudes of batches at once in a larger scale is also going to consolidate the amount of time it takes for you to actually make the product in bulk, which is really important, especially if you're gonna be going to a farmer's market and you wanna produce a thousand batches of an item you wanna make sure that you can scale it. So keep that in mind. Number one is the recipe can be scaled. Number two, the fewer the ingredients, the better. This is for a couple of reasons. Number one, production. When you're creating a particular product and you have a multitude of ingredients, 10, 12, even 15 ingredients that have to be measured out or weighed or whatever it may be, that is something that's gonna, number one, cost more money to make and it's gonna take more time for you to actually produce a finalized product. So the fewer the ingredients, the better. And here, I'll give you a basic example. Some people enjoy making trail mixes or granola mixes as they may be called. There are some trail mixes that have three or even four simple ingredients. They put it together, they may coat it with honey, may coat it with a flavoring, bake it in the oven, and then you're done. Now, obviously you can create that on a really big scale. Obviously it's scalable as well, as we mentioned back in number one. But number two is the fewer the ingredients, the better. That's going to be a really good key ingredient to creating a single product that is simple to make and is very profitable. Number three, small amount of production time. This is something that a lot of people don't keep in mind at all because they enjoy cake cooking or they enjoy baking or they enjoy making this particular item or they've got a recipe that may take two or three hours. Try to find a product that cuts down on production time because you are minimizing the amount of time you have actually invested in making the product. So if you can scale a recipe, create a bunch of it in a minimal amount of time, that's gonna be better for you because you're not gonna to have to be in the kitchen all the time producing a product. So you can take tons of bags of it or a lot of packages of the product to a farmer's market or a local event without having to invest an entire day or so in just producing that batch. So keep your time in mind as well. Now, number four, it can be handheld. Now you're probably thinking, what does that mean handheld? There's a, there's a little tri trick, there's a little uh, secret, if you will, about farmer's markets. Making them really profitable is creating a product that can be handheld. You want an item that's not cumbersome, that doesn't come on a plate, that doesn't come in like a to-go container with a lid and all that, but something that's handheld. Because most people who actually buy food items that are handheld while they're at an event walking around will consume it and eat it while they're there. And if they do, there's a good likelihood if they're still hungry, they may even come back to your booth twice. 
So make a product that's easy to hold, that's in a nice simple packaging, doesn't involve a lot of other things or other items or packaging to go along with it. Handheld items, people have a tendency to eat and then they're done, okay? Number five, easy to duplicate. Well, what does that mean, Damien? Well, let's say that you have one type of roasted seasoned nut blend. Let's say you have a mixed nut and you roast it a certain way and you've got a certain flavor. Well, there must be a very simple, easy way for you to duplicate it in a multitude of flavors. So once you have a great recipe for an item, it's easy to duplicate. You want to create a variety of flavors or flavor profiles, or as they're known in the food industry. You want to have a multitude of flavor profiles, but it needs to be easy to duplicate. So number five is make sure that the recipe is easy to duplicate in a multitude of different flavors, okay? Number six, this kind of ties in a little bit with the one we said earlier. But number six is the minimal packaging design. Creating a food product that is minimal packaging that doesn't require spoons and forks and straws and containers to go plates, all of that extra stuff, guess what? It may sound like a good idea, but it's gonna cost you more money because you're paying for packaging and your customer may not be able to hold out a plate or have a big thing that has a spoon and is scooping out from a bowl or a plate while they're walking around an event. Nobody wants to deal with that. So minimize your packaging. When you're developing your food product, when you wanna figure out what is the best food that you can actually sell from home, you want to also keep in mind the packaging. The least amount of packaging, the better off it is for you because also you're gonna make a lot more money. You're not having to pay for additional packaging just to serve your product. And that's also gonna be convenient for your customer because you gotta think about them. If they're walking around, they have a couple of kids, they got some bags of items, they're not gonna to wanna to hold a plate and try to balance all that. It becomes annoying. So minimize your packaging. Number seven, this may not be something you have ever thought of, but make your portions smaller. There's a psychology behind this. The smaller the portion size is, and people love the fact that it's minimal packaging, as we discussed, easy to make, and it's a smaller portion size that they eat very quick, and it may be something that can be handheld, they're gonna come back, okay? I've seen this before in farmer's markets all the time, is that the size of the portion will give them something to kind of snack on, but if they're really hungry, they're gonna come back and say, can I get a couple more of those? So make your portion size a little bit smaller than you may normally would, okay? Because that's gonna entice your customer to literally come back a second, third, or maybe even a fourth time while they're at an event. So the smaller the portion size, it's a little trick, by the way, to let you know the uh, potato chip industry does this. And they've been doing this for decades. If you go to a local sandwich shop and you've noticed lately that those little bags like Lay's chips bags and other bags, Doritos, they've been getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, they're doing that to cut back on the cost of production, but guess what? When I go to a sandwich shop and I end up getting a sandwich with my son or my wife, I end up buying two or three of these bags because they're so small, it's not enough to even eat. Smaller portions will lead to much more sales, trust me. Try it out and see what I'm saying. Number eight, you need a product that you can make that will appeal to both parents and kids. This is something that a mistake that a lot of people make when they go to a farmer's market. They have a great idea for one single product, but that product is something that kids love. Parents are not really big on. Try to think outside the box. If you have a way to make a variety of products, maybe you know, three or four different items, make something that appeals to both kids and parents. Why do I wanna do that, Damien? Because I've seen this happen before. When I go to an event or a farmer's market, the parent goes to the table. I've actually done this myself for my son. There's an item there that the, my, my son loves. I'm not remotely interested in it at all. I'll buy something there, then I go over to the booth over next to them and buy something for me or my wife. If you can capture the sale for both the parents and the child, you're making more money. It's just a common sense thing. But it's also something a lot of people don't think about. So make something that appeals to both parents and kids, and that way you can entice everybody to just stay at your table and make more money. So. These are eight quick tips to answer the question about what is the best food to sell from home. If you are looking to create a home-based food business, implement these eight. Try out these eight different tips and see how well these tips will perform for you at a farmer's market or even a local event or whatever it may be that you're selling. But they are some of them psychological and they're gonna get your customers to come back to your table again. Try to capture the sale for yourself. Not, don't have them go down two or three tables down and spend more money to someone else. Try all these eight tips out and trust me, you will see a huge difference in the type of sales that you have. So if you have any questions about what is the best food to sell from home, if you're creating a home-based food business, let us know down in the comments and definitely we'll get to your questions as soon as possible. I got somebody coming into my office here. So 
What we're going to do also, we'll have a brand new podcast uploaded later today as well. Make sure you stay tuned and come back for that podcast. Um, and then down below, there's more additional resources in the description below this actual video to help you guys out with your food business. So I'll see you guys on our next video.